Holy smokes, everyone. Welcome to a surprise market open live stream. Uh, a lot of my viewers, they said they wanted to get access to some of these market open live streams. Uh, some people couldn't afford the other market open live streams. So of course, I thought I'd do one uh, for you, my loyal viewers, because I couldn't really do anything on this channel without you guys, my viewers. So we're just going to have a quick discussion about the markets today. We're going to go over all the action uh, when the market's open. Uh, and then I can answer any of your questions uh, some of you guys have. So just let me know in the chat uh, if you can hear me and it's all good because last time uh, I did a live stream, I was speaking for about 20 minutes and uh, didn't realize I wasn't uh, live. So just let me know uh, in the chat if you can hear me in, uh, and everything's all good. All right, awesome. Okay, let's go. Let's get into it. All right, first things first, let's have a look what's uh, happened in the market, say, in Asia. So we can see in Asia, it's pretty mixed uh, results uh, in Asia. Uh, where I am, Australia, the ASX was down about 0.22%. Uh, Hong Kong Stock Exchange down around 0.89%. Uh, the Nikkei and Shanghai were pretty much flat. Um, the European markets are open right now. They're pretty much flat. Uh, there's not much going on there. And if we go to the pre-market, the pre-market, the futures uh, are pretty flat as well with the NASDAQ uh, in a bit of the red and uh, the Dow in a bit of a red as well. Um, so let's have a look here. So this is something I'm watching uh, here right now is oil. So oil, um, you know, we all knew and we all uh, guess we could see it there at the petrol pump. Um, the oil prices were absolutely um, skyrocketing. Fuel prices were skyrocketing. Um, now it did drop. Um, you can see here below uh, $100. But now we're starting to re back, uh, rebound uh, again. So if we hit, uh, go back to you know $130 a barrel, then all these uh, recession risks, uh, like I've been warning about, uh, they're still all they're still all on the table. And um, I don't know about you, but even when oil went back down to um, $100 a barrel, I'm still seeing uh, those uh, petrol and gas prices going up uh, at the pump as well. So have a look. What else is here? Natural gas down about one percent. We can look here. Gold, gold's pretty flat, down around uh, one thousand nine hundred twenty-three dollars. Uh, silver is up about 0.4 percent, twenty-five dollars an ounce. But what I find uh, is very interesting. Look at this, everyone. The ten-year U.S. Treasury yield. So this is, uh, you know, really skyrocketing right now. It's uh, almost at two point two four percent. So what this means is uh, mortgage rates, the thirty-year. Uh, in the US, a 30-year fixed rate, that's definitely going to be going up, hitting uh, new recent highs uh, soon. And something else I want to really talk about is the 10 and 2-year yield curve here. So I've been talking about this, and for those that don't know, uh, the 10 and the 2-year, historically, normally when this inverts, that signals that the economy is most likely going to be entering a recession. And yeah, I've been covering this and it's fallen down to around 0.2, 0.3%. But now it is at a new uh, recent low. Uh, the difference between the two-year U.S. Treasury yield and the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield is only 0.17% now. So it's pretty much getting very, very close uh, to inverting right now. Um, so that's something I'm definitely watching. We'll have a look what else is uh, going on here. We'll have a look at the, uh, the DXY, the dollar index. That's pretty much flat, but um, we have seen the trend over the past few months. The dollar has been strengthening. Um, so that also um, helps with uh, inflation. Uh, if the dollar starts going down, then that's going to be more inflation. We'll have a look what else is going on here. I see some people asking about <laughs> crypto. Do I hold XRP? No, I don't hold XRP. I learned my lesson... Um, in 2017 of trying to hodl XRP. Doesn't work out too well in a bear market. So we can see Bitcoin. Bitcoin I've seen, it's just been really trading around the 34, 35 to 42 range. It just seems to be going back and forth here. Um, and like I was saying, we're, we are in a crypto winter. We are in a crypto bear market. Um, so I'm still waiting for prices to go lower. And I don't expect um, you know to enter a bull market until 2023. So we can see here Ethereum, and the other altcoins, all the other poopy coins there are pretty much flat as well. Um, okay, so let's see what else is going on here. Commodities, let's look at commodities. As we talked about previously, oil's going up. But look at this, everyone. 
look at the year of year. I'll just adjust my screen here. Um, the year of year, crude oil up 76%. <laughs> you know, they're saying, don't worry, no inflation here, nothing to panic about. Natural gas, uh, this is US, is up 90%. Heating oil, year of year, is up um, 104%. Coal, look at this. We're seeing all the um, issues in China right now uh, with power uh, from rising coal costs, especially um, when they were heading into winter. That's up 260%. These are crazy numbers here, and people still telling you not to worry. We can see here, look, in Europe, you know, gas prices are up over 400%, which is absolutely crazy. Um, we can see here the metals, not much happening besides lith lithium. If you've got some lithium, good on you. <laughs> You're up uh, a fair bit there, 265%. Now, agriculture. This is something we definitely got to look at. Uh, wheat, this is the um, hot commodity right now because of what's going on uh, with Russia and Ukraine. Um, wheat prices uh, are actually up 69% uh, year over year. So I don't know about you guys, but it seems like every week now when I'm growing, going to the grocery store, um, food costs are going up, especially meat as well. Um, lumber has made a recent comeback recently, but the past week has dropped a bit. Palm oil, that's also something that's starting to uh, go up a fair bit, up 54%. Milk, you got milk, that's up uh, 37%. So that's something I'm definitely noticing Coffee, all you coffee drinkers, I don't really drink coffee, um, that's up 75%. So, you know, if you go into Starbucks um, and you're splurring all your cash, you should really stop doing that and um, start saving for an emergency fund or, um, you know, dollar cost averaging into the markets instead of uh, blowing it all on coffee. Um, okay, so that's pretty much the futures, industrials, nickel, that's had a recent rally uh, recently. Um, but we can see here it's pulled back recently as well. So it was up 128% uh, year over year, but the past week has fallen about 23%. So we're nearly nearly there for the uh, opening bell. Let's go have a listen to see uh, what they're saying here on uh, Bloomberg. Which is surprising considering what the European Space Agency has achieved and how vital it is to the global space industry. Uh, space industry not really exciting. We want the uh, the opening bell. Um, okay, so let's see what the futures are saying now. And I'll, and I'll just quickly read the comments. Um, holiday would be flop smokes. <laughs> Lithium will crash because of solid state batteries. That a website I'm using. It's uh, trading economics. Max is stocking up on coffee. Good on ya. Starbucks simp juice. That's a funny comment. Going off for of Tesla. Yeah, so many people are just oblivious about the commodity price rises. Yeah, so most people, you know, this is kind of a good uh, indicator to try to get an idea of what's going to happen inflation in the future or some prices in the future. If you're seeing the commodity markets, you know, skyrocketing and they're not going down, then you can kind of guess that uh, prices are going to keep going up. Damien Wright thinks gold prices are buy. What do you think, everyone? It's still pretty close to its recent highs, but um, if inflation keeps getting worse and if we do enter a official recession, because remember, I'll just switch back to me here, um, we won't know we're in a recession until after it because it takes two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. So it feels like we're in a recession right now, and we could very well be in a recession right now, but we won't actually get the official data until six months later. Okay, let's see the bell. Uh, let's get the bell here. It's Monday morning, the start of a brand new trading week. Futures basically unchanged on the S&P following what was the biggest week of gains on the S&P 500 going back to November 2020. The biggest week of gains of the year so far on the S&P and on the Nasdaq too. Money, Pretty flat going into the open switch on the board. We are anything but in the bond market. Ten-year yields are higher, much higher. Up nine basis points to 224. Let's round that up. 
from 223.91. Yields up across the curve, twos all the way out to 30s. We shift higher from anything between seven and nine basis points across a range of maturities. In the FX market, the euro just a little bit softer, negative down lower by almost a tenth of 1% on euro dollar to 110.43. And crude breaking out. Look out for energy stocks at the open, up by more than 4% to 108. 93. Mm. About 30 seconds in, we declined by just a tenth on the S&P, top of the pile. Energy by nine tenths of one percent at the bottom. IT, we're negative there by four tenths of one percent after a really strong rally last week. Breaking down the open for you, here's Abby. Well, John, stocks may be down just slightly, not a lot of movement there, but there are some big movers beneath the surface. It is Monday, and we do have an M&A Monday. In fact, we have Berkshire Hathaway buying Allegheny, the insurance company, for $12 billion, or $848 per share. Excuse me, $345, excuse me, no, $848 per share. You can see the stock is almost there. Okay, so um, yeah, we can see that market's pretty much flat at the open, uh, not much happening there, but uh, like they said, energy stocks um, have been going up, and if any of you brought oil uh, when it was negative, uh, you're definitely doing uh, good right now. So uh, we'll go here, yep, market's pretty much flat. So just let me also know if you guys got any questions, I'll try to get to them as well, but we'll have a look at some of the headlines that you know I was just reading quickly um, or looking at before. Uh, started this uh, live stream. So look at this, everyone. Fed's uh, Bostic, not sure extremely aggressive rate path is appropriate. So this is absolutely crazy, everyone. They're calling this uh, lifting interest rates to 1.75% extremely aggressive, and they're still not sure if it's appropriate. I don't know what they're smoking at the Federal Reserve, but inflation is absolutely out of control. I can't really you know, put it into words how bad it really is. I've been going on for it for a while now, um, but they're still delusional because I guess they don't live the average life of the average American or even here I'm in Australia, we're experiencing very high inflation. These central bankers, uh, they just completely out of touch with uh, reality. Um, and like I said, 1.75% interest rates, that's not extremely aggressive at all. I would think extremely aggressive would be minimum lifting interest rates to match inflation. And that's what they had to do last time in the 70s to bring down inflation. So this is why I think we've kind of seen a bit of a reversal uh, in the markets this week because the markets have already priced in these first five to six rate hikes. But what normally happens uh, with these rate hikes is it takes time for it to flow into the economy and for people to feel it and for us to get that data. So what normally happens in a rate hike cycle is the markets will try to price it in when the Federal Reserve announces it, excuse me, uh, six months in ahead. So that's why we're seeing the sell-off uh, over the past three months. The market's trying to price it in. Then the markets will try to look forward um, to see what's going to happen. Maybe things won't be as bad. Maybe the economy won't enter recession. Then they'll start buying the dip. But then once the rate hikes uh, do get up to that 1.75 and 2%, like what we saw in 2018, then that does start to have an effect on the economy once people can't borrow as much, once people's credit card rates go up, if people have variable interest rate loans, then that starts to affect them. So this is why we're seeing this kind of volatility in the market. It's going to take a while for it to play out, everyone. Check out the 10-year. Okay, let's have a look at the 10-year. Um, let's go here. Yeah, so I was um, talking about this early in the stream. So yes, it is about to hit a new record um, or close to a new record of 2.24%. So yields are rising. That means uh, mortgage rates are going to go up. And um, hopefully this crazy housing market will finally get uh, some of the air uh, pulled out of the bubble. And like I was talking about earlier, I'll just quickly refresh this. Um, something that I've been watching very, very closely is the 10 and 2 year uh, treasury yield uh, spread. So that's the yield curve. This just hit a new low and it is almost about to invert. So like I was saying earlier in the video, is now at one point, uh, so it's, it's at now at 0.17%. So pretty much when the yield curve inverts, that's predicted most recessions uh, since the 70s. Let's see what else, uh, some news here. I'll just quickly look at your comments here, guys. Petrodollar done soon. Yeah, we're seeing um, some news there with Saudi Arabia thinking of maybe selling um, barrels of oil in Yuan. 
I'm not sure how soon that will happen, but that's starting to that's definitely the trend we're starting to see. Um, we're seeing that US uh, dollar reserves are going down. They're at about a 25 year low, uh, down to about 59 percent. So no one can time exactly when it will happen, but the US does seem like the world reserve currency status is on the decline. And like I've shown you in previous videos, it's normally around roughly between 80 and 110 years a country or an empire can hold world reserve currency status. So some random dude thinks we're actually in a depression. And yes, for the average um, American or the average middle class person in any Western country kind of does feel like that with wages you know, not keeping up with inflation, definitely. Uh, I'm definitely feeling it when I go in grocery store when filling up gas, um, and it just seems very hard to get ahead because even if you do get a pay, pay rise or work overtime, then the bills just keep getting more and more expensive. Let's see what else you guys are talking about here. The Mini, everyone on the live stream here, and he has... 59 likes, 800 in the stream, bump up the algorithm, hit the like button. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, okay, so let's see what some other news here. So uh, some recent news, um, Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, agrees to buy an insurance company uh, for $11.6 billion. So um, we'll see what happens there. Good old uh, Warren Buffett, he's starting to come in and buy when he's been uh, hoarding cash, and he definitely does uh, like insurance companies. Um, we'll just adjust this here. So also what's happening, something big that's happening right now is Europe. And, uh, you know, I mostly cover what happens in the markets in the US, but Europe definitely is uh, a major player, uh, in the global economy. And with what's going on with Russia and Ukraine, that's definitely going to have, uh, big consequences, uh, for Europe and for the global economy. And what we're seeing with, like I was showing you, uh, here before guys with, you know, gas prices rising around 400%, uh, in Europe. We can see here TTF gas and UK gas. Um, this is going to have huge inflationary pressures on Europe and they're going to have to start uh, lifting interest rates. But look at, the, look at this headline, everyone. I thought this was quite funny. Uh, traders are betting the ECB will hike rates to zero. <laughs> so it sounds a bit funny there, hiking interest rates to zero. But the reason for that is, is because uh, they've actually got a negative interest rate right now of uh, 0.5 percent so uh the ecb uh lagarde she's been saying look don't worry inflation's transitory uh, she tried to play the same tricks as jerome powell um and that definitely hasn't worked out well for her and now with um the gas prices fuel prices in europe skyrocketing um they're definitely going to have to start hiking interest rates as well so let's read your comments here guys <laughs> No need for hunger as a Federal Reserve will just print beef. <laughs> that's right. They can't print food, guys. And and that's that's another thing. Um, you know, I've been talking about something I've been thinking about. We've got another COVID outbreak uh, in China right now, uh, and they're going back into lockdown. So a lot of the inflationary pressures have, yes, been demand from all this stimulus. But now that this stimulus is taken away, uh, these supply chains, the Federal Reserve can't fix the supply chains and, you know, Gas prices were going up um, a lot before the war, but with this recently uh, extra surge in inflation uh, from these high gas prices, the Federal Reserve can't fix that either. So really, like I've been warning about, they're kind of um, you know in a bad spot either way. They're in a corner, um, and I don't really see a way for them out of this. Okay, so we'll have a look here. So traders are piling back into European uh, Central Bank, uh, raising interest rates to zero this year as officials look to curb the fastest place of euro inflation on record. So that's right. This is actually the fastest um, inflation they've ever had. So it's not like uh, in the US um, where, you know, it's a 40 year high. This is the highest ever. Um, and do you really think, you know, lifting interest rates to zero um, is going to do this? No. Okay, so we'll have a look what else is going on here. So adding to the urgency to tighten policy, ECB's uh, ECB said market expectation of interest rate increase later this year are quite realistic according to an interview. Um, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, pretty boring there. So yeah, pretty much 
Inflation is getting worse in Europe. They're going to have to keep hiking interest rates. Uh, gas prices are dropping a little bit, so hopefully that helps. But um, what this is causing effect on uh, the markets is um, these high gas prices. Uber and Lyft drivers are consider uh, considering uh, quitting as pain at the gas pump grows. So I know um, a few friends and family that do Uber, that do Lyft, and they're just pretty much, you know, given up there's no point working uh right now with these crazy gas prices they're not really making uh much much money at all um so yeah so we'll see how these high gas prices. this is the real consequences we're seeing it's going to affect uber it's going to affect lyft all these a lot of people are employed by these companies um and they're going to have their incomes hit hard fedcoin um so they are doing more research um Jalen, they are doing more research on Fed coin. They've released some papers. I think they're eventually going to be coming. They haven't released a date on when it will be coming, but I wouldn't be surprised uh, if they don't create um, a Fed coin within the next two years because what I think is going to happen uh, during the next crash is they're not going to be able to print money fast enough. Um, the US government is going to be in too much debt. They're not going to be able to send stimulus so what's going to happen, I think, in my opinion, is the Federal Reserve, they'll, you have your digital wallet with the Federal Reserve, and when the recession hits and when they've used all other tools, they will send you these digital Fed coins uh, to your wallet, and it may have a negative interest rate or an expiry date, or they may say you have to spend it at these specific industries. So um, it definitely won't be good. It'll be more you know, financial censorship and financial control uh, like what we've been seeing over the past few months. The diesel price in Sweden is now twelve dollars a gallon. Sixty-five percent is tax. Yeah, that's that's the um, thing we're starting to see in some countries. Same New Zealand, um, seeing they've got over three dollars uh, per liter petrol. Um, seeing the UK um, petrol prices are really expensive because of these higher taxes. So that's just making it even worse for certain countries. Um, okay, let's see what else is happening here. So also um, another issue for the markets is obviously what's going on with China right now and Russia. Um, you've seen here Russia has asked, from, asked for help from China. China's in a sticky situation. Um, they've obviously got ties uh, with Russia, but then they don't want the economic sanctions that would come from the US. So this is more uncertainty for the market that we have right now. Um, and, you know, we've Russia, if China does go and help Russia and the sanctions placed on China, uh, we're definitely going to see um, a big shakeup in global trade and the global economy. Um, but it's looking like, as of now, um, China is being very trying to be very diplomatic, and you know they're kind of looking after their uh, own interests right now uh, because the economy is weakening from lockdowns, from the property sector slowdown, so they can't really afford sanctions uh, from the U.S. government right now. But that's something we have to look out for um, as investors, as potential risks. Um, if this does escalate, if for whatever reason NATO gets involved, um, because yes, the markets have kind of priced in the conflict at the moment with what's going on. Um, but these are still there's still so much uncertainty with what could happen going ahead. Okay, so we'll go back to the market, see what they're doing now. Yeah, so they're pretty much flat. Not much happening. There's really no positive catalyst for the markets right now. There's not much um, new negative catalysts. Obviously, what caused the sell-off over the past three months was was a Russia uh, Russia Ukraine situation. But what, like I said, normally what happens with conflicts is there's a lot of selling off uh, ahead. The market tries to price it in when the fear uh, is there and it's at its peak. But then a eventually people just kind of get used to it as sad as it sounds uh, the markets get used to it they price it in they start to look uh, towards the future same with the federal reserve rate hikes like i said the markets will price it in uh, before it happens the first three four five rate fed, uh, fed rate hikes the markets won't do much um, but it's not going to be until a year after we have those interest rates at two percent like what happened in 2018 when we started to see the real estate sector start falling 10 to 15% in places like New York, California, we'll start to see those uh, be affected. Okay, we'll see um, if uh, Bloomberg's talking about anything interesting here. No. 
Okay, let's have a look at you guys. You guys got any questions here? Thoughts on the NASDAQ? Well, I was calling for around a 20, uh, William, thoughts on the NASDAQ. Well, I was calling for around a 20 to 30% decline uh, in the NASDAQ. It did fall down about 21% um, at its lowest, so it did enter in a bear market. Um, it could have been a good short-term swing trade if you did buy in at that time. Um, but there still is uncertainty with what's going to happen with Russia, Ukraine, and um, if the Federal Reserve is going to get more aggressive uh, with their taper. I'll, like I said in my last video I uploaded um, two days ago, if the Federal Reserve only lifts interest rates to 1.75%, it's going to do nothing to stop inflation. And there's also another possible scenario of a market melt-up. So if you haven't seen uh, my thoughts on that, you can check out my video that I posted a couple of days ago. So diesel, $5 a gallon in Washington State. So yeah, that's something I think the market still aren't really prepared for is if we are in a recession or if we do enter a recession. So that's really the main catalyst I'm looking at now um, to see the markets can go lower is if we enter a recession, people's putting all their money on food, fuel, uh, utilities, housing, and not having discretionary spending to go out there and spend on other items. So the site um, for, I use for the uh, 10 two-year treasury yield is Y charts. So I buy uh, both paper and physical gold. I know people um, probably not happy with me buying paper, but it's, that's just more for when I want to trade the price. But when I want to hold, uh, you know, real physical gold, silver, uh, in case of you know some kind of uh, global calamity. Uh, have physical as well. Um, Fed coin by 2023. That's creepy. Yeah, it is a bit creepy. Um, possibility of delisting Chinese stocks. It is a possibility, um, but I doubt they'll do it unless, obviously, um, China does start helping Russia. Do I think the current market rally will last? Well, like I said, like I said just previously in this live stream, it all depends on if we enter a recession. It all depends on if the Federal Reserve gets more aggressive with lifting interest rates and if NATO joins in with a conflict with Russia and Ukraine, if somehow they get involved, or if China supports Russia and then sanctions are placed on China. So Julio, you're asking your rent in California by house, gold, or crypto. Look, I can't give financial advice, um, but the housing market is pretty uh, inflated at the moment in California, in my opinion. Um, crypto is in a bear market. Um, but if it does fall below 30000 it may be some buying opportunities. Again, not just financial advice. This is what I'm looking at doing. Um, and gold... I'd probably wait for it to fall below $1,900 to um, start stacking up on some gold again. And I think what would happen uh, with gold is we have to get back to a risk-off environment. Like what we're seeing with bonds right now, people are selling off bonds because uh, we're going to more of a risk-on environment because equities have fallen to more attractive levels for now. But things we can see in the markets can change very, very quickly. Of all we know, something could pop off. There could be some black swan event and things could change in a dime. Let's see what else you guys are asking. Producers go short to raise funds for capital. So as producers start going under, shorting will force short squeezes on commodities. Yeah, so that's something producers normally do do. Say, for example, if oil hits an all-time high, they'll ramp up production and then short the market. Um, so then they can make profits uh, on both ways, on the way up and on the way down. And they can also use uh, future contracts to manipulate the prices as well. Playing prepper. No, I, I never play with leverage. Um, that's just gambling, guys. I never recommend leverage or shorting or anything. Even if I think the market's going down, I don't short the market because, you know, you have infinite losses uh, potential.
Um, let's see what else you guys are saying. Evergreen halted. Let's have a look. Okay. No, I didn't see this. Thanks for uh, letting me know. Let's have a look here. So trading in China, Evergreen shares onshore bonds halted pending announcement. So guys, let's speculate. What do you think they're going to announce? And like I said, with what's going on with China, when things really hit the fan, they're not going to release the data. Um, I saw last this month they released their retail sales data and um, it was like double expectations right when the economy was getting shut down. So it just didn't make sense at all. Um, so we're probably not really going to know um, how bad it really is until we start seeing companies go under. Um, so let's see here. So shares of embedded property developer China Evergrande and onshore bonds issued by its flagship unit uh, were suspended from trading on Monday pending announcement by the company. Okay. The filings gave no further details. So yeah, it's just still so much uncertainty here. Just having a quick look here. Mm. Go ahead, bring up their share price. So just this here. So we can see here, yeah, it's got a little uh, rebound here, guys, but definitely uh, not filling me up with confidence. Down 89% year over year. Evergreen's next payments due March 23rd, 2.1 billion. Oh, yeah. Like I said, guys, I don't think they're going to uh, be able to make that payment. So league record credit and debt, record money printing, record fuel prices. Switch it up here. Fake real estate pricing, war, inflation, COVID shutdowns, crypto down. Why is there no crash already? Well, like what I said, guys, these crashes, they can happen over months, years, or or even decades. Um, and it does, it's not just a straight decline to the bottom. We did see you know, a 21% drop in the NASDAQ, and that is a significant drop. We did see a correction in the S and P five hundred down fifteen percent, um, but what happen? What can happen is there's also things called technicals. Now I'm not a trader; it's not part of my expertise. But if the technicals say things are oversold, then you start, may see some hedge funds come in and start, you know, buying up the dip. Also, um, you know, there is this uh, conspiracy uh, here of the plunge uh, protection team, um, and this is um, something that was really uh, begin. Um, it was given to a group on the financial market created in 1988 to provide financial and economic recommendations to the U.S. president during turbulent market times. So this is also what some people are thinking maybe uh, could be happening. Um, so the real the real thing uh, for the for the plunge protection team is really an advisory uh, group uh, to the U.S. government. So it's headed here by the U.S. Secretary of Treasury. Other members include the Chair of Board of Governors, the Federal Reserve Chair, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the Chair of Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Um, so the the name, the Plunge Protection Team, where people keep referring it to, was started from Washington Post and first applied to the group in 1977. And so its mission is to provide advice to the U.S. President. But look at this. This is the conspiracy here, everyone. Critics fear the plunge protection team doesn't just advise, but actually intervenes to prop up stock indices, including with banks to rig the market in effect. Um, and, you know, this is not really news, everyone. They did this during the Great Depression. You know, JP Morgan, he organized with the banks to do this. Um, now, I don't. there's no hard facts or evidence uh, of this plunge protection team, um, but it would not be surprising to me if once the, the banks saw that the NASDAQ was in a bear market, sentiment was falling the economy was falling that there can't be you know market manipulation at play because we definitely don't have free markets and we'll have we'll have a look here to see exactly how it works so in march uh, 1988 in the wake of the stock market crash so that was like black monday then president ronald uh, reagan created an executive order that the president's working group on financial markets the, con uh, the concept was uh, to create an informed but informal advisory group on the markets for the president and regulators 
charged with in, uh, enhancing the, the integrity, efficiency, and orderliness and competitiveness of our markets. So this is the concerns. Though not exactly a secret, the plunge protection team isn't widely covered and doesn't release minutes. So this is the big conspiracy theory because they're having meetings, but the public doesn't know what they're talking about and there's no minutes released. Uh, reporting only to the president. So this behavior leads to some observers to wonder if the government's uh, most important financial officials are doing more than analyzing and advising. In fact, they're actively intervening in the market. And they say here, conspiracy theorists have speculated that the group uh, executive trades on several exchanges when prices are heading downward, collaborating with big banks such as uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, Morgan Stanley, um, and in unreported transactions. So I've just got a super chat here. Uh, so Dan, do you think if China decides to help Russia with conflict in Ukraine, at least in some terms, getting around sanctions, that Biden would sanction China? If he does, then it could trigger a worldwide depression. Um, I do think, they've, they've said they'll do it, and I do think they'll do it. I think they have no choice to do it, but I don't think China is going to do it right now. They're not really in a posi position of strength right now. I think China is still going to buy their time uh, until the economy becomes stronger and, and then do it at the right time. I think they're seeing right now with what's happened with Russia and Russia's economy, it's completely collapsing. Um, as of now, we'll have to see how things play out. But I think they're going to uh, buy their time and maybe do something at a later date. Um, okay, so we'll also have a look here. So where was I? So how the plunge protection team might work. So on Monday, February 5th, 2018, and I remember this. Remember when this happened? Uh, this was when uh, the Federal Reserve hiked interest rates um, over 2%. The Dow uh, experienced a drop that was twice as large as its biggest point decline in history. However, arbitrary and aggressive buying cut the decline in half in one day. On Tuesday and Wednesday of that week, stocks opened lower, and each time aggressive buying uh, buoyed the markets. That aggressive buying, some say, was being orchestrated by the plunge protection team. Or to take a more recent example, so again, that was in uh, 2018, um, the uh, S&P had been heading towards a record decline. The motive for the team's meeting and the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 650 on the 24th alone. But when trading resumed after Christmas, the Dow Jones Industrial Average rallied over 1,000 points. On the 27th, it lost half of those gains until a late day reversal stopped the slide and caused the market to close 600 points up. That's no coincidence, conspiracy theorists argue. So I think this is just something very interesting, um, a very interesting uh, theory here. And like I said here, it's this is this is not nothing new, everyone. Um, so this sort of manipulation is not unlike the actions um, of what private banks and financials did in the late. Remember, they did this in the 19th century and 20th century during financial panics. Uh, we saw this in the panic of 1907, um, and also in the Great Depression. J.P. Morgan, the bank, stepped in. Of course, the difference is that the working group on the financial market is composed of U.S. government officials and the U.S. is supposed to operate a free market system and also an open one, not one influenced by ferocious forces or mysterious forces. So that's just, um, yeah, a quick little history lesson on the uh, so-called punch protection uh, conspiracy theory. And what's also um, added to conspiracy theories is um, people have speculated that the group execute trades on several exchanges when prices are heading downward, collaborating with big banks, like I said. Um, Morgan Stanley, uh, they, the big banks such as Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley uh, in unrecorded transactions, they often point to a 1989 speech uh, public in the Wall Street Journal by former Federal Reserve Board of Governors member uh, Robert Haller, which suggested the Fed could directly support the stock market by uh, purchasing index future contracts. So what do you think, everyone? Do you think when the market crashes next time and they've got no more tools to print more money um, or lower interest rates any lower, 
do you think the Federal Reserve is either doing it now or they will do in the future? They could directly support the stock market by purchasing index future contracts. So they'll say, look, we're not actually buying stocks. We're just buying future contracts. Um, so let me know, what do you think? Do you think that's happening now? And do you think that will happen in the future? And if that does happen, well, of course, we won't see um, a big market crash if they just directly start buying stocks. <laughs> it's a funny comment, uh, RS. All right, I'll just uh, answer a few more questions and then I think that'll be uh, us for uh, this live stream. So have a look at the markets here. They're starting to head into the red. Seeing a bit of blood here. Uh, the Dow down about 0.17. The S&P pretty much flat and the NASDAQ is heading down lower. NASDAQ does get affected more by the 10-year US Treasury yield, which is still around 2.23%. God's work price prediction for BTC 2025. I think we will be in another bear market by uh, 2025 based on the four-year cycle, but what the price could go, who knows? Could be 100K by then. Chris, do I think that the market jumping 7% a day last week was due to the fact that propped up by the Chinese government? Look, Definitely would not be surprised, especially when we, I think the market was down about 6% and then it had a huge rally and skyrocketed 9%. And this was after uh, the um, the HSI, uh, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, plunged about 36%. You can see here, yeah, we can see this big drop here, this little thing's covering it here. And then all of a sudden, boom, quick rebound there. And this this news also happened because um, China came out and said, look, we may uh, not get as aggressive as uh, punishing these IPOs because what happened in 2021, uh, they started really clamping down on billionaires. We saw what happened with Alibaba. Um, and so this caused a huge sell-off in the tech sector in China. But now that China's economy is falling, they're starting to... Um, be a bit more friendlier as for now. So they're saying, say, look, don't worry, guys. We're not going to, um, you know, delist these stocks. We're not going to clamp down on billionaires anymore um, because obviously they're losing too much money. One thousand k with you since four hundred sub. Thanks, mate. This is the end of the biggest bubble in history. Could be. Thoughts on Aussie real estate market in 2022? Well, really, Lee, what's happening is um, the RBA, they're being much more dovish uh, than the Federal Reserve, the Reserve Bank of Australia. Um, you know, they're still trying to say in Australia that inflation is only 3.5%. So they're definitely cooking the books much, much worse than what the Federal Reserve's doing. At least it's kind of reflecting a little bit more than what inflation is of 7.9%. Uh, so we need um, a switch up by the RBA and the RBA needs to start hiking interest rates to get inflation under control. So once interest rates start moving up, that has a very uh, strong correlation with real estate prices. And that's what's caused this real estate boom around the world, not just in US, Australia. This has happened everywhere, is these record low interest rates, high inflation. What people do is they take on debt. They pretty much do what the government does, takes on debt. And when there's high inflation, if they can borrow at 3% and inflation's at 8% or real inflation's at 15%, then that erodes away at the debt. And they use that as a hedge against inflation. Japan couldn't believe it when the bubble burst and they had uh, work, yep. So like we've seen in many com uh, countries, the markets could fall right now. We could ent be entering into a lost decade. Um, we'll only know after it's happened. Um, the Fed buys up mortgage-backed securities. That mortgage-backed security source counterparty can buy useless assets of previous owner. We have the cycle of manipulation. Of course, there will be a crash. 
value uh, is a necessity. Yes, that's right. I think they just stopped buying mortgage-backed securities this month. But the question is, this is a, a that reminds me another risk for the markets is, what is the Federal Reserve going in to announce uh, in May with what they're going to do with their nine trillion dollar balance sheet? Um, they have they've brought nine trillion dollars worth of U.S. Treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. They said they're most likely going to announce they're going to start selling off some of those um, in May, and that's what has even a bigger effect on the markets is once they start selling assets because then that uh, directly lifts up yields on uh, the 10-year US Treasury. So when I prep, I try to prep a little bit. I'm not really an expert, but um, I've definitely been increasing my food storage um, and that's definitely you know been a good investment because uh, meat prices have been going up like 25% a year and food costs are going up. So I definitely still have a lot to go there. So oil is up 5.9%, someone's saying. So yeah, oil making a comeback. Um, so there's going to be more problems. Um, what the markets did like, and that's another reason why we had a recent rally, is oil fell below uh, $100 a barrel. So the markets were thinking that, you know, there's nothing to worry about with inflation, but now it's uh, making a comeback again. So if oil hits... Um, $130, $140 a barrel again, we're going to see more pain in the markets. Tech, yes, City. Thanks, mate. I'll uh, check out your channel after this. Yield curve is manipulated. Well, it's going to be a lot less manipulated now that the Federal Reserve so-called uh, isn't buying bonds. Do I see Aussie dollar going higher with commodities? Yeah, well, if um, commodity prices go up higher, especially coal and iron ore, that's normally bullish for the Aussie dollar. Um, but if the Federal Reserve starts lifting rates more and the RBA doesn't, then that's going to be bad news for the Aussie dollar. I'm not currently uh, invested in stocks. Like I said, I've been waiting for the 20 to 30% decline, and I'm still not convinced with this recent rally. Mike is a prep. He has an extra jar of peanut butter in the cupboard. You betcha. Um, all right, everyone. I think that'll do it for this uh, market open live stream and Q&A. I uh, really enjoy it. I like having, you know, the live chats with you guys where you can answer questions. Um, yeah, really enjoy it. And I uh, hope I can do more of it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, just give it a thumbs up. Um and I'm trying to uh, bring more and more value to you guys uh, as much as I can. You know, when I announced that, you know, I'll be doing market open live streams for private members, not everyone could afford it, especially what I've seen was happening with inflation. Uh, I felt bad and I thought I'll do some, you know, public uh, market open live streams uh, for people that can't afford it. Um, because I don't want to be like the, you know, these greedy companies that are using inflation as an excuse to jack up prices. Um, I want to help out where I can. So thanks for watching, everyone. And of course, I'll see you in the next video.